What's going on YouTube? This is Barrett with Espresso Outlet. I have the DF83 V1 in front of me. And when we came out with the V2, we started getting the questions, can I upgrade my V1 to have the V2 features? And the answer is yes. So today I have the parts in front of me to convert your V1 to a V2. We actually have two options, but I'm gonna go over the plasma generator today. So to begin with, we have a new chute. And it kind of has some little prongs on the inside. And we're gonna wire that chute to this little controller. And it's pretty easy to install, it looks like. We're gonna make this video and just probably a couple, just a quick write up. And then last but not least, it's really hard to see. I about lost it, so make sure you're not gonna lose it. You have this little clear declumper, and it's a different style declumper. It's kind of like a square with a slot. You also have two of these crush style wire nuts that you'll use to connect the new chute, I believe. We're gonna take a look at the pictures. So I'm gonna get some things set up. I need to get a screwdriver and probably some pliers. I think that's all you really need to install this. So let me get set up and we'll get this thing installed. Now I do want to remind you that we'll be working with some wiring. So do this at your own risk. Um, I thought that the original worked pretty good for me, but we still have people wanting to do the V2. So we want to get it so that you can install it, but I just want to let you know, if you're not comfortable with this, maybe don't do it. We have another option that you might like that's very easy to install. But that said, let's get going on the installation. So to begin with, let's just take off all of our miscellaneous pieces. We have this dial at the top. Here's is probably a metal dial. We have the anti-popcorn. Then we're just gonna remove this top burr. So I use this all the time. It's always fun to see how little is on the inside. Let's take a look. It's pretty clean. That was just kind of stuck in the chute when I took it down, so. Next, I know that this part varies for certain people, but you'll just need to loosen these two screws. You don't really need to take them out. I usually just get mine loose. And then kind of pull up. And do not pry on this, you'll break your chute. You'll have a new chute. Maybe I need to loosen these. Might just take them out. Okay, so this is kind of an up and out motion. I needed to loosen them up quite a bit more. So now we have access to this front chute. Next, you have two screws in the front. You'll do, you do need to be careful. Uh, don't drop the screw into your grinder. You can get it out, but it's not fun. And there's also a crush washer on this, so. There we go. There's one. There's two. We're also about to lose our declumpers, which we, did we lose one? Yeah, 
One fell down on the grinder. We'll get it out in a minute. So with our old chute off, you can kind of clean out, maybe grab a vacuum. Uh, ideally, you don't want it going down in the motor, but you can just sweep it out. So it won't really hurt it that bad, but I just like to keep things as clean as possible. Okay, so before we proceed, make sure to take this wave spring off and set it aside. Also, you might take these little rubber feet out just so that when you flip this over, you're not gonna lose them. So put them to the side. Make sure your grinder's unplugged. You should have already done that, but now triple check. And let's flip our grinder upside down. Be very careful, these threads can become damaged. Maybe lay it on a, a bath towel or something like that. Next, you have rubber feet that just need to be pried off. And set them aside. I like to keep them as clean as possible so that I can reuse them. Uh, you might get a little bit of coffee grounds on them if you don't do that. And then use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four screws. Be careful not to lose the screws. You might have to use a flat screwdriver to kind of pry up on this just a little bit to get it out. So now we have access to the wiring of our grinder. I'm gonna put these screws aside and then we're going to do a close up of how to wire this. So in my case, I don't know if other grinders are gonna be this way, but the hole for the wiring is off to the side, which means we're going to have to remove this bottom plate. There should be three screws holding it on and you're gonna need some wire cutters and potentially some replacement zip ties to tie your capacitor back down. I'm gonna throw my zip ties in the trash, but I do recommend replacing your zip ties on your capacitor, just to keep your capacitor from moving around as you move the grinder. Okay, again, it's a good idea to have a towel so that you don't scratch up your grinder. I'd place it on a towel and put it on its side. We're going to grab our new chute with the wires and we are going to fish these wires down through the body of the grinder. You're probably gonna to have to move the base slightly to the side. And this part can be a little bit tricky. There's one. The other one's hiding from me. Well, it might take you a couple of attempts. There we go. 
So now let's fish through the body of our grinder. Next, we want to get our declumper, and it's going to be important that we install it correctly. I'm gonna look at the picture real quick, just to triple check. It should be pointed, Let's see if you can see it. There's a slot and it kind of sticks out. We want that to be out and we want this to go down. So to install this, let's start by putting it on the back like so. Hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna to try to zoom in. And we'll just fish it back down. And you wanna make sure that your declumper goes through because what people are gonna do is they're gonna put it on the back and it's not gonna dump out and then people are gonna be jamming stuff in there. So make sure to make it so that it has a slight lip and it goes in. Okay, we fished that back down through the body and we are going to attach this new chute. Same as before, get it nice and just a little bit snug. Let's do the other side. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Okay, it's on nice and snug. I'm just gonna kind of pull those wires down and again, we're gonna flip this grinder very carefully. Okay, so the base is back on. And we want to reinstall these four screws. If you're not careful, you can get the base a little bit crooked. So before you tighten them all down, take a look at the front and make sure that it looks level. Next, I'm going to zip tie our capacitor back down. You might wanna wait on that just so that we can have plenty of room to these wires. So the manufacturer recommends tying our plasma generator down to the ground. So we're going to loosen this ground We're gonna place our plasma generator
Okay, so now we need to take the white wire on our plasma generator and wrap it around the white wire on the chute wires that we just pulled through. And then do the same thing with the black. Ideally, you'd like to use a wire crimper, but today we're just going to use some household needle nose pliers. Place your cap over the top. Okay, it took me a second to get these little crimp connectors off. I was able to reuse this one. You might end up replacing it. This one I ended up breaking, so I got a little wire net out of my toolbox. So that could be an issue for you trying to get these other crimps off. I think we're gonna to try to include maybe a few extras if you need to replace them. But that one's on pretty good. I do wanna note the wiring on this. The, I think different grinders, as they have made them, the wire colors have changed. But on your ion generator, you're gonna connect the red to the red motor lead wire not the capacitor wire. And then you're gonna connect the black to the white motor lead wire, or it might be blue, I think. Uh, it just kinda depends on when your grinder was made. So we're gonna button this thing back up. Let's put our capacitor back in. I'm putting new zip ties in. And you might be able to do this without taking your capacitor out and without taking the plate off. But for me, it was much easier to go this route. So we have that zip tied back in. Let's clip these zip ties off. and kind of start tucking these wires into your grinder. And you're gonna to wanna to take probably one last look to make sure that you put this plate on nice and level. It can get put on a little bit crooked if you're not careful. Take this bottom plate. Let me find the screws for it. Okay, so let's flip it back over. Well, before we do that, I about forgot to put the feed on. I have our rubber feet. Okay, let's flip it over. And I might leave that off just for some videos, just for fun. We can put it back in. Easy enough. Oops. Let's put our rubber feet in. spring in 
And I might try to get, you want to keep the grease on this burr carrier best that you can, but you don't want old coffee stuck to it. There we go. pretty close and there's our zero let's just put this indicator on for now so that's about zero uh, I'm gonna grab some coffee and let's grind on maybe like 50 okay I went ahead and loaded some coffee beans in the top I did a little bit of testing on this just to see how it would work. You're still maybe going to get a little bit of the, the cling on the outside just with the chaff, but I found it really did a nice job of keeping the chute completely clean. I probably ran a half pound of beans through this, and that's about as dirty as it is, and it's, it's pretty much completely clean. So let's turn it on. <laughs> Let me move close so you can see it. A little bit hard to see because it's reflecting. But pretty much completely empty. So that's the installation of this V2 anti-static device. I don't really recommend it for everyone because it is a lot of work. You are gonna have to do some wiring. Uh, I want you to feel confident that um, your wiring is correct before you use this. I don't want anyone getting shocked, but I know that we're gonna have a lot of questions on how to install this, uh, where can I get it, and things of that manner. So we wanted to make sure that all you V1 DF83 users at least had the option of installing this V2 mod. Um, for people that may be a little less comfortable with doing this type of electrical work, we're also going to begin offering this metal declumper. And I'll do a second video just showing the metal declumper. And I'll unhook the wire for this and we'll just try it out without, without the added electronics. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you if you opt to install this on your V1 grinder. Uh, a couple more things. I know people are going to ask, will this work on the DF83 or yeah, DF64? The answer is no. Um, will this work on the other grinders that we sell? No, it's really just for this one. And it does come with the new chute with the uh, small wire probes on the inside. Uh, it comes with the little box, your electronic box that you can install in the base and some wire nuts. So that's really all you need. The things that I use for this, I did have to use a knife instead of a wire stripper. I didn't have a wire stripper at my shop. Um, you might need some wire clippers and some needle nose pliers or just regular pliers and a Phillips head screwdriver. So pretty common household stuff that you'll need for this. Uh, you'll probably want to replace the zip ties on your capacitor. Past that, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It wasn't that difficult, but Yet again, I just want to reiterate that this might not be for everyone or within everyone's comfort zone of doing. So if that's the case, I'd, I think that metal declumper is actually going to do a really good job. Uh, another question that I know I'm going to get is, can I use both? I don't see why you couldn't use both the metal declumper and this. Uh, we'll probably end up trying that too. So thanks for watching.